sort of, um, you know, asymmetry in terms of what we uh, give and what we get uh, is that the funds and the powers of government are not being used to advance the public interest. They're being used to enrich uh, a core of lobbyists and the special interests that they represent. So there are, uh, you know, a few hundred probably lobbyists who have offices within just a few blocks of the Capitol. And they are collectively known as the Third House. They're called the Third House because, you know, the first house of the legislature is the Assembly, second house is the Senate, and so they control, the Third House basically controls the first two houses, uh, and certainly controls the governor. The vast, vast majority of uh, political funding uh, in California comes from the Third House. Uh, every legislator gets hundreds of thousands of dollars per election cycle without really even having to ask for it. Gavin Newsom has gotten, just for this recall, he's raised $65 million, almost all of it came from the Third House. Uh, in fact, the recall is Newsom's dream come true in a sense because it's unlimited campaign contributions. So you can just say, SEIU, give me five million. Teachers unions, give me another few million. Hey, George Soros, you should have a million. <laughs> oh, it's true. Uh, he, he just got a million from Soros. But you know, Soros is actually not a typical example because he's not part of the Third House. He's actually an individual. But you know, the Third House is, represents the biggest corporations, uh, major industry associations, uh, and uh, certainly the unions. They're the most powerful of all. And I have to say, most of them give to both parties. It's really just a handful of the unions that give primarily to Democrats. But oh, they, public unions, right? Uh, yeah, public unions mostly. They're the most powerful. Uh, but you know, basically everyone else is bipartisan. They get the funding from the third house. And so, I mean, I see it when things come up for a vote. The most important, really the only factor in a lot of cases is which side of the vote has the most juice. Uh, meaning, uh, you know, which side has the biggest, most powerful, top-spending special interest groups supporting it. When it comes to your committees, you're elected as a member of the legislature and you are assigned, you know, five or six committees maybe. So I'm on the Education Committee, Judicial Committee, various other committees. The most coveted committees are called the Jewish Committees. They're committees that maybe you haven't even heard of, Governmental Organization Committee. Uh, the Insurance Committee is considered to be that. Uh, B&P, Business and Professions, Big Juice Committee. What that means is that the biggest, wealthiest, top spending interest groups have repeat business before those committees. So they tend to give even more money uh, to the members of those committees. And so the way the culture works is that uh, every legislator uh, will have uh, a third house fundraiser every few months. Uh, these take place at restaurants within a few blocks of the Capitol. Um, the French Laundry isn't one of them, but that's kind of a good <laughs> kind of image for the culture of it all. Uh, you know, there's, uh, and, and legislators go to each other's events too. There might be like 15 to 20 uh, on a given night going on. And so the lobbyists hop from one to the other, the politicians hop from one to the other. Uh, and uh, then the same lobbyist who is at your fundraiser uh, at, I don't know, uh, we'll say Frank Fats, although I actually like that restaurant, so I don't want to give them, uh, what's another one? Anyway, they're all actually closed now, a lot from the uh, That same lobbyist who's there paying $2,000 for your event, they're also sitting in your office the next day uh, talking to you about a bill. And you're not allowed to talk about fundraising when you're in your capital office, and you're not allowed to talk about capital business when you're at the fundraiser, but what do you know, it's the same person that you're seeing on two consecutive days. So this is, you hear about the swamp. I mean, this is swampier than anything, you know, you see in Washington, D.C., perhaps. And, I mean, I, I'm kind of going on to some length about this, but the, uh, you know, the reason this system in many ways exists is, is really in some sense structural in California. We have this, uh, these massive uh, districts for the legislature. I represent 500,000 people as an assembly member. A senator represents a million people. Uh, and uh, that's four times more than the ratio for the next closest state. So it's really, really expensive to win a seat in the legislature. And so these special interests just kind of pick their person. They're the only ones that have the funds to compete. They just fund them and they get an office. And that's what they do with Gavin Newsom. They pick that person. They've underwritten his rise to power, especially PG&E and the teachers unions. And they've gotten that person uh, in office. And so uh, I'll be honest with you. When I was first elected, I was elected in 2016. I had never run for office. I had no support from the third house. Uh, in my initial race. I got funding from citizens to win my primary, which is 11 candidates in that race. But I got there, and they started sending me checks like they do every legislator. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I, at first I kept them. But then I saw that this is, I saw what it was doing to our capital. I saw that this culture was what was destroying our state. And so I became the first legislator in, I believe, modern California history to say I'm not going to accept any special interest funds. in this room, 
of, of citizens. And so I, for this race, we've gotten over 7,000 people have made a contribution. Sometimes very small, it's like $5. That means a lot to me. I mean, that's, all, I mean, you know, of any value because it's just another person who said we're willing to uh, be part of a new model of citizens made legislators. So what I would want to do as governor is spread that model. I want to say let's get more legislators who are there to serve the people and no one else. Yeah. Yeah. Probably more than you ask. Congress put me 